It's time for Over There with Morella Rostroffer. Morella is our European correspondent. She joins us weekly. Um, our uh, GCHQ has told us, however, that she is over here, which doesn't stop her at all from talking about over there. Hi, Morella. How are you? Hi, Jill. Yeah, very well. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. From over here, uh, but with a lot of enthusiasm about um, about Europe, of course, and with a, a topic concerning um, Germany um, today, um, Germany and uh, other countries, uh, you will understand why I'm saying that now. It's about the global compact for migration. This is an agreement paper that has been discussed in um, July, last July, at the United Nations in New York. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a paper that is supposed to help regulating and uh, bringing some um, s- some some harmony in how to deal with the huge wave of migrations that uh, we are having, uh, not only in one country but in uh, many countries of the world. Um, so this. Uh, um, Paper has been signed uh, at the beginning by uh, everybody except um, the United States. And then uh, after that, uh, Australia also pulled out um, and different other European countries um, by the same token also pulled out. Those are uh, more or less the usual countries that don't um, don't envision uh, the world um, the same way. That is Hungary, uh, Austria, Poland, uh, Slovenia, Croatia, uh, Denmark, all countries that do not want to sign this agreement in um, Morocco on the 10th of December 2018. Uh, Basically, this paper is absolutely not uh, legally binding. That is the thing. It doesn't oblige any country that signs it um, to to any sanction if uh, certain uh, clauses are not uh, followed. It's... um, it's almost like a letter of intent and uh, um, is supposedly um, trying to bring people together on, uh, on how to deal with migration, as I said before. So what are the points in there? Um, some um, of the points that I would say are the most uh, interesting uh, in terms of uh, how how to implement them, would be to facilitate sustainable livelihoods in countries of origins. So, uh, one of the problem of migration, obviously, it's the fact that uh, people are not able to have a decent life in their country of origins, um, and whatever the problem is. Um, One of the solutions uh, that is always uh, talked about is how to help that becoming um, possible. Of course, it depends very much on what the problem is. Is that a political one? Is that an environmental one? Um, is that a social one? So this, uh, such uh, paragraphs, such uh, clauses are very um, loose and um, one would almost think not really not really helpful even though it comes from a good intention uh, but the the array of problems that could be the reason of departures are so different from each other 
that uh, it's difficult to see how to act on those problems without interfering in the politics of a um, independent country. Um, another uh, clause that is very important is how to care, how to assist, how to respect um, people who uh, need to migrate and basically how to uh, continue apply uh, human rights. And uh, as uh, we know, uh, this uh, is something that don't necessarily happen when um, countries face uh, big waves of uh, migrants. Um, then another phase of uh, this uh, pact would be once the uh, migrants are into a country, uh, how to, thanks to them, enrich societies from a human, social, economic point of view. Basically, how to integrate them and how to... Um, uh, make sure that it's uh, not a burden on the system of a country, but uh, rather a uh, an advantage uh, that can be used to strive uh, all together. So um, it, coming back to Germany, I would say that uh, what's interesting is that the CDU, which is the party of Chancellor Angela Merkel, which, as a reminder, is also the chancellor who allowed um, a couple of years ago um, many uh, migrants in, uh, in, in Germany uh, and led basically to many of the political, uh, political struggles uh, today. Um, they think that um, uh, Germany should not sign this agreement either. Um, why? Because they feel that um, they want to keep the right to deal with um, asylum seekers and with migrants um, as it is best for their uh, own country and not necessarily how it is best for uh, the rest of the world. Um, they want to decide what's right and what's wrong uh, for themselves. So this is a, I would say, a kind of paradox uh, coming from the coming from the party who actually, um, until now, really encouraged taking in um, mig uh, migrants and asylum uh, seekers in order to, um, uh, to help them um, integrate in the German society. It also shows that after um, having um, now uh, had all these uh, losses in uh, uh, in German states, they are definitely trying to counter that by taking a harsher stance on uh, topics that have been now used by the extreme right in order to advance um, their agenda. Um, so this, uh, this is a topic that is also very much discussed in uh, Switzerland. Um, it's uh, very unsure who is going to, at the end, sign this paper in Morocco on the 10th of December. But I feel that this is especially interesting because at the beginning there was like a, a consensus about this paper and... Um, a clear majority about it, especially because it's legally not binding. Um, and now countries are trying, um, because of the political uh, fractions, because of the rise of the extreme rights, um, parties that were more open uh, to uh, immigration are also taking a much harder position in order to secure their uh, own political future 
um, which is in uh, in in truth definitely um, now in danger if you look the la- if you look at the last German um, uh, results in uh, in different uh, states. So it's it's in it's interesting to see that. Uh, parties are basically struggling for survival and it takes what it takes and um, there are changes of um, of opinions coming up in order to be able to stay um, on that uh, political landscape. Thank you very much, Mirella Rostorfer. Over there. My pleasure.